Welcome to our uh, podcast series. We're working our way through the Pilgrim's Progress. Um, we are all uh, uh, staff, pastors at Cornerstone Church. I, I'm Tom and I'm here with Pete. Hello. And Rory. Hello. Ben. Hello. And we are back for our second instalment of the Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, you remember last time we looked at uh, our, our main character, uh, this man who lives in the city of destruction, but he's got hold of a book. And he's learned in his book that the city in which he lives is due to be destroyed and that he himself is a sinner. And this book is the Bible and he's reading the Bible and becoming aware of his own sin and knows that he needs to uh, fly from the wrath to come and to make his way towards the narrow gate and beyond where he's going to receive life. Uh, That's the message that's given to him by evangelists. And uh, we looked at the difficulties of uh, having a family you know, children and a, and a wife who he loves, who just who just think that he's deranged for what he believes. They can't understand, they can't share his convictions, and yet he's had to turn his back on even the things that are very precious to him in order to pursue this even more precious treasure, which is, which is life and salvation. So he's still on the way out of the city, and uh, we, we pick it up, don't we, um, uh, with uh, with these two, well, with some neighbours and these two neighbours in particular coming to uh, coming to greet him. So, someone want to pick us off from there? Yeah, and we we probably need to say. He's, he, oh, I think I'm not sure if he did say it or not. He's got this huge burden on his back, this 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 sense of sin that is weighing him down. So he can't run as fast as his neighbours. So his neighbours catch him up. I think the family want the neighbours to to go and bring <coughs> it, bring him back. And you've got two neighbours uh, obstinate. Um, and pliable so um, ob- obstinate is sort of pig-headed um, what are the words stubborn like, uh, stubborn won't listen knows everything be quiet yeah not gonna not gonna budge and pliable is the exact opposite isn't it it's like um, like uh, play-doh play-doh you soft can mold and more. soft it in, in, into everything so they come running after him to try to persuade him um, not to uh, not to go on this silly journey, this whatever this is, mm-hmm. and to come back home. And there's there's a sort of self righteousness about them as well, isn't it? They know better. This bloke's got a, he's sort of a bit stupid. He's taking everything a little bit too much. Religion too too strong. You know, calm down, come back home, get on with life, and and you'll feel settled. But this burden is the thing. This this conviction of 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 his wrong and his guilt is the thing that's uh, putting him down, yeah, mm. yeah. And obstinate is trying to convince him that it's it's just foolish yeah. for him to leave behind all that he has worked for. And so obstinate is using phrases like, you know, uh, will you leave behind the comforts that you've come to enjoy? Will you leave your home behind? This is foolish. This is madness. You know, I've been sent here to to bring you back. Um, and I think you know several times. He uses that language of wisdom and folly. You know, it, it's foolish what you're doing. It's mm. wiser and more sensible for you to stay here, um, which is very interesting because it picks up on what the New Testament says about the wisdom of God. You know, that uh, the cross of Christ, particularly um, a crucified Savior, is the the way in which everyone can be saved. Um, is a foolish is a foolish message. You know, you're telling me that a, a, a carpenter from the back end of nowhere was crucified 2,000 years ago and that he has been appointed the saviour of everybody and is the king. Um, it's, it sounds foolish. And this is what Obstinate is saying. It's foolish what you're saying. It doesn't make sense. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're here to rescue you and to save you from your madness, basically. Um, I mean, in, in, one, in one sense, uh, if, if you're going against what everybody is saying, it does look like you're the fool, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, and that and that's that's what's happening. You know, no, everybody's saying no. It's not the city of destruction, and yeah. no, um, it's not. Uh, you, you, you'll you'll be all right if you return. So, in one sense, you know, I think advice would be to someone, but you're not listening to anyone. You don't listen to anyone, mm. but he is listening to something, isn't he? Yeah. He's listening to a revelation, and he's saying, no, this revelation comes from God. There's a word that is bigger than all of mankind's words. And this is a sure and certain word. And and this is telling me to flee. So it's, it's, it's not just his 
sort of wishful thinking he's going on, is it? Or it's not just his um, intransigence or I want to be different sort of foolishness, is mm. it? No. I mean, in the last session, we looked at how for days and days and days, he would just walk around by himself weeping. You know, this is not just a spur of the moment decision. And his family have tried to convince him. He's had to put his fingers in his ears and run away. So this is a massive, he's, a, he's under huge conviction here. Um, but I think all of us have had obstinates at different points in our lives, haven't, haven't we? And you might have friends who sit you down in the pub and say, like, well, what are you, you know, what are you doing with your life? And uh, nowadays, people would say, oh, you haven't got a big burden on your back. Stop thinking of yourself like that. You're not that bad. Um, you're a good person. You know, don't try and wh- what are you trying to run away for? Or because um, he's he's convicted, isn't he, of this this guilt on his back. And that's what people would say nowadays. Um, it's not the city of destruction. You're not that bad. And, and he's like not. That. He's obstinate. Is not prepared to look into the book. No. Mm. Uh, uh, in the original, it's tush. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, it's well, that's brilliant, isn't it? Well, that's the thing because I think obstinate is so worldly. He's so focused on this world and what it has that when when the Christian says, "I'm I'm com- going for an incorruptible inheritance." here have a look at, at what the scripture says about it he says i've got no time for that because all i care about is the here and now and there's nothing else mm. and there's nothing that you can say that will convince me otherwise mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i think you know for for this man who, who becomes christian um he's you know he's persuaded he's seen the truth of the things in the book hasn't mm. he so even if he can't explain everything at this stage um the, the the Bible is bec- it's like self authenticating for him, isn't it? It explains him in a way that nothing else can. So he does feel himself to be a sinner. He does mm. feel himself to be living in a created world. He does seek something beyond that. All chimes with what he believes. It's explaining him, and it's very interesting what he says to obstinate by way as a kind of invitation. He says to him, "Come away and prove my words." You know, he's saying, if you join me on this journey, you will see that this is an authentic, this is a real explanation of who we are and what life is about. If you will just come away with me, it will prove itself. Um, and but he says, you know, you, you know, you're a you're a brain sick fellow. Um, uh, so then, obviously, um, then you've got Pliable, who uh, is this sort of uh, play doh character who. Who starts to be sort of quite convinced, doesn't he, mm. with the Christian, or sorry, the, well, he's not. I think he is called Christian in this scene, isn't it? Yes, he is Suddenly actually. Changed, now. Yes, yeah, yeah that's interesting. Um, I wonder. Where and uh, uh, so now he's called Christian, and 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 Pliable is thinking, uh, well, which way do I go? I think Obster is quite a sort of unpleasant, brutish sort of character, mm. and obviously Christian has some real belief. And uh, obstinate is just obstinate, whereas there's something in Christian, he sees it, doesn't he? And, and Pliable says, oh, you know, perhaps, you know, perhaps I should go. And obstinate says, no, you come, come on, Pliable, let's go home. And <coughs> Pliable's saying, well, oh dear, oh dear, there might be something in this. What, 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 what is good about it? Mm. But that even that shows you, I mean, it's funny in a sense, because he's, he's being attracted by the right things, Pliable, isn't he? As he hears about the celestial city, he hears about... Uh, salvation and eternal life he's attracted by that which is good but it also shows you that he gets blown wherever the wind blows so he's very easily he's not c- really convinced by the book is he he's sort of just oh that's shiny it's like a shiny thing yeah. it's like oh that's shiny i'll go over there and then oh that's shiny i'll go over there so it's not he hasn't had the same conviction that christian has had about a life life eternal life he's not saying that is he He's he's and he's not trying to run away from the city of destruction. Mm. He's just seen something shiny and yeah, thinks it's a good idea. I was just so, so just going back to obstinate uh, after Pliable said, I think you know I might go. He, he, he obstinate says, you know what more fool still. Yeah. And then I think this really just shows he's a bully actually because it says, be ruled by me, and go back. Who knows whither such a brain sick fellow will lead you. Go back, go back and be wise. Mm. There's no evidence. There's no why it is wiser. There's no dealing with the thought that this world is going to 
be destroyed and you're going to die. Mm. There's no, there's no, it's just bullying, isn't it? Mm. So obstinate's a bully. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I don't want to go get back to pliable now. Yeah. Well, no, just just to come back to what you're saying, I think it's, um, I think that's right. He, he's he's ravished by the idea of uh, glory and an inheritance which will never be corrupted and a world where there's going to be no more crying or tears. Um, but he hasn't um, come under the same conviction as you were saying about his sin, and he doesn't feel um, that he lives in a city of destruction which deserves to be destroyed. So there's some key things he hasn't yet experienced, um, and that's just an interesting point because you know um, no nobody wants to go to hell. I mean, you don't have to be a Christian to want to avoid hell. Um, and everybody, I think, would like to believe, even if they're atheists, that after they die, there might be a beautiful place without any crying or dying that they could go to. So wanting to escape hell and be in heaven forever is not uniquely Christian. I mean, everybody would want that. And so Pliable is a bit like that. Of course, he's thinking, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to live there forever? Um, but that's not the nature of saving faith. The nature of saving faith is that you come to understand you're a sinner and you've turned and you're leaving behind and you are you are looking at this stage anyway to to a savior you want to treasure a savior who can buy you for this place um mm. and and that's the thing he hasn't hasn't got and which which explains what is what will happen to him you know shortly um so uh obstinate clear uh, goes back home uh pliable and christian are are walking along and pliable sort of sort of says well where are we going that sort mm. of thing as you sort of said and I, I just love christian here uh he answers pliable and says um i can better conceive of them with my mind than speak of them with my tongue but yet since you are desirous to know i will read of them in my book <laughs> and it's it's such a lovely thing isn't it that, that i'm going to open the bible up to you because mm. this is god's word it's not it's not down to me it's not just how i think mm. that there's this book that you want to read there's there's this um objective thing that's that's not just me and then pliable says uh, and do you think that the words of your book are certainly true and mm. christian says yes verily for it was made by him who cannot lie. It's a superb it's a, defense, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's not like, yeah, well, the manuscripts have been, uh, you know, faithfully yeah. transmitted over the years. And, you know, <laughs> it's just, well, God said it. God doesn't lie. It's mm. all true. <laughs> yeah, and which is a lovely, you know, faith in, in the revelation of, of uh, who God is. Because if, mm. if it is God's word, it has to be true. Mm. And, and uh, uh, but uh, again, it's, it's, it's not like obstinate who just thinks this. And it's, it's, and he's, he's not just saying, this is what I think, this is what I feel. There's nothing of that in it. He feels it, but he's not trying to get Pliable to believe on the feeling. So he takes him to the book. Mm -hmm. And then Pliable uh, says, well, tell, tell me about it. And off we go with these wonderful descriptions. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Christian really just paints a picture of what glory will be like. And it's, it's wonderful. And um, and it builds up that picture and builds up that picture and it looks like Pliable is quite interested, doesn't he? He's like, oh, it does sound fantastic, and it goes into Revelation. And he's he's looking, you know, at the at in the, they're all in the sight of God and standing in His presence. And so this is the, it seems like the thing that's exciting Christian, and and it seems like Pliable is coming along with him on this journey of understanding what heaven will be like. Mm. There'll be crowns of glory. Uh, given to us and garments that will made make us shine like the sun in the firmament of heaven you know here's a bloke with this filthy rags on still yeah. mm -hmm. and he, and and th th this weighing down sin but as he's speaking it to pliable he's believing it more himself and, and pliable says well, this would be very pleasant uh, and <laughs> yeah. what else and there's no more crying no more sorrow you know, no tears and so forth. And, price. and what company will be yeah. there? And then it's just cherubim and cherubim <laughs> and dazzling thing and the holiness of God and the loving God. And it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Well, it, and then it's, and we'll see men who are <laughs> cut into pieces by the world, burnt in flames, eaten of beasts, drowned in the sea, all because of their love for the Lord of their place. Yeah. All will be well enclosed with immortality as with a garment. <laughs> it's quite well. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, it's interesting that he picks on the people that were persecuted that were there because we're going to see because because they went through that yeah. 
but believed, really believed in the celestial city. Yeah. But we're going to see Pliable not so happy. No. Well, let's go to that, shall we? Here he is. Uh, so after their chat, um, it says, uh, Now I saw in my dream that just as they had ended this talk, they drew near to a very miry slough <laughs> that was in the midst of the plain. Um, so here they are. This is a slough. It's a, it's a slow-going, watery bog, muddy bog, isn't it? That's it's, not, it's not the uh, town near Windsor on the a- M4. No, don't think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe some similarities, uh, though. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they, being heedless, did both fall suddenly into the bog. The name of the slough was Despond. Here, therefore, they wallowed for a time. <laughs> um, so here they are. They've just been talking about the glories to come. And Pliable is the one who says, come, enough talk. Let's mend our pace. In other words, let's keep, let's go quicker. Yeah, let's get there. And, um, you know, their very next step, they've fallen into a bog and they're wallowing. And uh, it's called Despond. Um which is, a, I, I suppose, a, 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 a sadness, uh, a kind of melancholy, um, disappointment, yeah, disappointment yeah. fear. Yeah, um, so they're, they've come to this time in their life, um, you know, where they, there's been some kind of conviction of sin. They know that uh, Christian knows he needs to go to this better country. He's on the way there, but something is sort of happening. He's now maybe second-guessing himself, perhaps, or he's worried. Has he made the right decision? Um, I'm all alone, perhaps, you know, I've left my, there's, there's, there's things that are rattling around in his conscience that are making him uh, feel perhaps sad and lonely and stuff. So that's, that's what it's a picture of, isn't it? And to go through it is like wading through a, a sticky bog. It's just, it's just hard going. Um, and so that's where they both go and end and up. Pl- and Pliable shouts out, oh, neighbour Christian, where, <laughs> where are you now? <laughs> Um, and, and Christian doesn't know. No. He doesn't really un- know what's going on. No. Uh, but he still has belief in the future. But, mm. yeah, this is where Pliable is offended, isn't it? He's actually offended. Mm. And he's like, if this, is, if this is now at the start, what else is out there to come? Yeah. What, what other difficulties are there going to be on the road? Yeah. It was way better back there. Well, we weren't in a slough. He wants to be sort of beamed up to heaven, doesn't he? Yeah, he without likes any everything. Effort, without yeah. any pain, yeah. Mm. And the slightest difficulty is making him change his mind. Yeah. So he's no, never any conviction. It was just, that sounds like a nice idea. And then as soon as it's difficult, turn back. I mean, Rory, you were saying before we started recording that this is, um, this is an illustration of uh, a, one of the parables Jesus told, yeah. um, parable of the sower where um, a, a farmer goes out and scatters his seed and some of the seed lands among the thorns uh, which grow up and choke the plant and make it unfruitful. And Jesus then goes on to explain that the thorns of this life are worries and anxieties, um, things that, that choke faith in us uh, and and grow larger than faith in us. Um, and that's what's happened to him. He's He's heard the message, he's responded with joy. It looks like he's a Christian, but as he goes on and the worries consume him, you see really that there was not much life there. And I think um, it's interesting uh, in the Exodus story, isn't it, where you've got God's people who've had 400 years of difficult labour and slavery. They are led out. They're on the way to the promised land. When things get a little bit tough for them, um, they start wishing that they could go back to slavery. Um, you know, we preferred the diet there. At least we we had some sort of rhythm in life there. We knew where we were going. And so it's extraordinary. They've seen the Lord do these incredible miracles. And he's leading them to a promised land. But they look back and they think, my old life was better. Is this the happiness that you promised us, Moses? Is this is this what, this was the message, was it? You know, And that's exactly what Pliable is saying. He's mm-hmm. saying, my basically, my old life is better. And he's struggling back towards um the the city of destruction and i think just uh, just pastry i think this is a masterful uh line by bunyan here because at the end of the day you know what is it that distinguishes between pliable and christian it's the direction of their struggle um so it's not that they uh you know one is immune and the other they have both fallen in but the christian struggles in the direction of the cross 
whereas the non-Christian str- goes struggles back in the direction of the world. Um, mm. And that's the thing we can say to Christians, isn't it? You will go through difficult times and you'll feel despondent and sad, but keep struggling in the direction of the cross. Don't struggle um, back to the world. Um, mm. And that's what separates them both in the end, isn't it? And it proves where they're, where they're really at. Um, yeah, so he gets out. He goes. Yeah. He struggles, and he with out. with one or two desperate uh, efforts, he's out. And he says, interestingly, he says, "You possess your brave country alone." Hmm. He calls it a brave country, as if he's now realised that in order to get there, you're gonna. Th- this courage. is gonna require courage and bravery. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's. What should we just deal with him then? So he g- he goes home, doesn't mm. he? Doesn't doesn't help Christian. He says you you yeah. stay in that pit. <laughs> Absolutely, it's sure you're heaven. Stretch. Well, it's yeah. probably quite tempting because um, there is a way out, isn't there? It's easier to go back. Yeah. So you're both struggling, but it's easier to struggle backwards than it is yeah. forwards. Except, yeah. except for Christian, because he's sinking quicker. Yeah, because of the because, burden. Because he's got the burden. Yeah. So he actually understands that he's a sinner, and I yeah. think yes. that's why he feels that anxiety more than mm. Pliable. Pliable's like, oh gosh, I've terrible times. No, I'll go back to the city of destruction. That's helpful, isn't it? Whereas, whereas um, Christian's like, oh, my burden yeah. and the knowledge of sin. I think increases his yeah. fear and anxiety. In That's a, a really good point, isn't it? Because yeah. it is a good thing to have a conviction of sin. Yeah. But it's also the way Satan will accuse, isn't yeah. it? You know, you're too bad. Yeah, you are a sinner. God's never going to love you. And so it can, something good can become what pulls you down. And, and so therefore you, you wallow <coughs> as in a bog in yeah. self pity rather than drive you <coughs> and try and drive you to the cross, I think. Yeah. But can, can you think of a, a real life pliable? That we've, we've met. Can you think of, you know, what, 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 let's try and sort of, what is that? Yeah, I do remember when I was at, when we were at uni, there was a student girl that we met uh, who um, who had been coming to the church mm. and uh, w- and was was loving it, I, I think. Yeah. Um, and then somebody in her family, it was her father or mother, got got a diagnosis uh, of, of some illness. Um, and uh, I remember meeting her, and, and she left the church quite suddenly, and I remember meeting her and said, oh, what happened? And she said, you know, I prayed to God and said, um, unless, unless I'm going to give him three weeks, I'd give him three weeks to heal this person, and if not, I would, I would be walking away. You know, I would say it wasn't real. Um, wow. Which is a sad example, isn't it? And I don't know why she chose that particular, you know, period of time, but... Um, uh, so here so, was so, someone so who we'll was taken up with yes. Christianity in a sense and encountered a difficulty mm. which no one wants to like mm. you know, downplay, but that was the moment when she realised, oh, this isn't the sort of life of constant increasing happiness that I thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, what's up with God? You know, I thought this God had promised something else, and she. Then, then left. I mean, I don't know what happens. I, that, I guess but, um, it's it's the, the the sort of people that just it is always one way in one sense. Mm. I mean, in one sense, the gospel is always one way. It's all of grace of God. But um, it's uh, I I I want the as we were saying about pliable the dazzle and the beauty and the heaven and the help from God and I'm happy to pray and that. But mm. it's the the effort that you would put in in walking the Christian life. So as it is it with the parable of the sower that you were talking about, you know, when a temptation of wealth comes and you're to say no as a Christian, you, you that's too much, that's heavy, that's taking you into the slough of despond because mm-hmm. I want that or when there's sexual temptations or whatever the temptations are, I suppose that's really what you're dealing mm-hmm. with, is it? Mm-hmm. And, and then I would say there were hundreds of pliables. I, I guess in my life I've known hundreds of pliables um, that seem to be taken up with Christ, mm. but when something hits, mm. it they just fall apart. There's no real faith there. Mm. Um, and then they just go to the world for satisfaction or mm. back to the world to, 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 to stay at home. Mm. Yeah. And I suppose um, I, I'm always, I always am reminded when we talk of things like this about um, Helen Rosevere when she was converted because she was converted and, the, and the, the, the person that was preaching where she was converted underneath told her that the Christian life is, is hard. You have to share in his sufferings. Mm, yeah. And it's interesting that Pliable doesn't hear no. 
when Krishna has said, look at all these people that suffered, but they're now clothed with immortality. Yeah, and so the, the way of, of the Christian life is the way of the cross. Mm. And so that means that we are going to encounter sufferings in mm. many different ways. Mm. And so if you're going to become a Christian, then be prepared for a difficult life here, but with absolutely incomparable. Okay, so Pliable then goes back to the city of destruction, and it's not happy for him, is it? No, not at first, at least, because people he's got he's got no credibility in any camp, has he? No, because no one he doesn't really believe in anything. No, and that's not attractive at the end of the day, is it? It's just brilliant writing a bunny, though, mm. isn't it? It is, and I think that's what happens to to Pliable, and and you know the the genius of this is, I guess we see even as Christians, we see the sins of these characters in ourselves as well. And you know, a pliable person. <laughs> in the end, there's a difference between someone who's weeping with those who weep and rejoicing with those who rejoice, where you're adjusting to what people are like and trying to give them truth as you find them, and being pliable, which is like. At a conviction level, I am open to just flexing. What you know, whatever I think is important in this group, I'll just change to match it. And and people like that, I think they can get on well for a while because it's hard to dislike someone who's just going to change to agree with you. But in the end, people work out, don't they? That you you know, and uh, and that's the, yeah, that's that's a caution. We want to be we don't want to be like obstinate who uh-huh. is has got is so convinced of something that he's pig headed and can't hear the truth. But neither do you want to be a pliable who no. is convinced of nothing in the end. And uh, it's just I mean the scary thing is our society on a sort of decade long level, if you think about our society in terms of decades, is quite pliable, isn't it? Because we're suddenly believing things we've never believed before. Yeah. Because just a few people are championing some ideas yeah. and then the h- everyone moves. <laughs> yeah. And but then in t- 20 years time we'll be yeah. against it and tearing yeah, yeah, statues yeah, down. Yeah. 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 So we, we <laughs> our society is pliable, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's like the sea, isn't it? We come and go and come and go. There's no substance. You were, Pete, you were reading about a French philosopher recently who said yeah. something about our cells. Well, I mean, because because changing um, every seven our years. Ce- our, all of our cells in our body have changed every seven years, mm. which is really interesting. It's seven. Um, we're different people. So I'm a different person, you know, literally, physically a different person. Mm than I was seven years ago, because all my cells are different. Um, his point was that, um, I and mean, it's not Christian, but what uh, uh, was that um, the only consistency you have throughout a person whose cells are changing every seven years are the promises that they make. And uh, I mean, it's just a very interesting thought, isn't it? So if I promise to be you know, faithful to my wife, then the thing that makes me me throughout the 37 years I've been married um, is is that promise. Yeah. That's because oh, I made that promise 37 years ago. Yeah, it's the, the terrific. Yeah, it is a yeah. great thought, isn't it? Yeah. So Pliable, um, he's well, gone. He's yeah. gone. He's gone back yeah. ho- back home to the city of destruction. It's, it's great with Pliable because he, <laughs> they say to him, "If I had started this adventure like you did, I wouldn't have been so timid as to quit after just a few difficulties." Yeah. And it says Pliable sat cringing among them at these words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's good, isn't so it? Super, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. And and you sort of meet. You're, I think I think if I'm right, uh, we'll, we'll see. Right at the end of the book, you meet a sort of person is a bit pliable I'm, I don't, I don't, we'll, we'll see uh, we, we need to move on don't we so uh, here's Christian sinking yeah, under his yeah. feeling guilty and under the feeling under the wrath of God and whether God could ever save him and uh, despairing you know of himself and but wanting to go on desperately mm. wanting to go on mm. so who turns up But I beheld in my dream that a man came to him whose name was Help and asked what he did there. Um, Which I think is a similar question to Evangelist asks him, isn't it? What are you doing here? Yeah, or something. Um, It's quite a a godly question in the sense that God asks (laughs) Adam and Eve in the garden, Mm. where are you? Mm. Why are you hiding? Mm. Mm. Christian, Help. Um, what a name. Yeah, sir, said yeah. Christian, I was bid go this way by a man called Evangelist who directed me also to yonder gate that I may escape the wrath to come. And as I was going thither, 
I fell in here. But why did you not look for the steps? Um, so here's help. You know, where are you? How did you get here? And why have you not um, made use of uh, these steps, which Stepping are designed to help stones. people uh, yeah. through the... Yeah, so what, what, what's that about, the steps? Well, I guess they're the promises of God. Um, you know, in other words, I am a sinner. I am a filthy wretch. Uh, but Christ has come to seek and to save sinners and to uh, turn us into the child of children of God. I guess they are the sort of steps that mm. you have to remind yourself when the burden of sin is upon you. Mm. Uh, I've died for your sins. I've, yeah. Um, I mean, th this is all of quite, it, it is all slightly strange, all of this. Um, in, in the Christian faith that we, 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 it takes so long to get to the cross because we're not there yet and we've got quite a bit to go before he gets there um, but the, he was a Puritan you know John Bunyan they, they, they sort of quite liked this um, utter conviction of sin uh, which we miss completely don't we um, we we've gone the other way but they, but they tended to sort of look for this broken utterly broken under the conviction of sin stuff mm -hmm. and a bit more of that would be would, would be good wouldn't it um but yeah so uh when you're convicted of sins you need to apply the promises i guess mm -hmm. is, that, is that what you're saying yeah well he goes on to say a bit later on that there are by the direction of the lawgiver uh which is god the god of the country certain good and substantial steps placed even through the very midst of this slough um and so there he is talking about even in these moments there are the lawgiver has put you know solid ground there there are promises that the, the lord is never going to utterly forsake <coughs> forsake you you know there are promises um that you can cling to and you you need to keep preaching them to yourself um it's interesting though that the the bog can spew out mud to sort of, and, and and this mist seems to cover these steps and so <laughs> The, the fears and anxieties can cloud mm. the very promises of God. The, they take our eyes off what's true and good and they put it on the actual circumstances that mm. the Christian finds himself in. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it gives you a dizziness of head. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this, this whole encounter is, is why church is so important, isn't it? Because um, help is sent by the king, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's, he's one of the king's messengers and representatives. And we we can't we can't be lonely Christians in this world because when we can't see the mist, we need someone else to point it out and say, "There is there's a stepping stone there." Um, and so we need helps, don't we, to ask us questions, remind us of truths, pull us out of things sometimes. Well, th th and and again, this th th this shows that uh, a Christian isn't a fool because he's prepared to listen to help and to actually put his hand up a fool would say go away i'll do it on my own isn't it yeah. so uh, we were going back to when um obstinate was calling him a fool he isn't a fool mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then i think there's a there's a discussion in the book isn't there about what what exactly this place is doing here um isn't that right? Yeah. They talk about well, what, well, hold on, what, what, why is this place here? It's been there sixteen hundred years or or something. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, that's an interesting point, isn't it? You know, why doesn't the Lord of the country just fill it in um, and make it easier? And I guess in the providence of God, you know, he uh, of course he could do that, um, but actually uh, he wants to grow Christian character and Christian conviction in his people and one of the ways he does that is not by just removing all their difficulties but by training us to trust in him even in the midst of our difficulties you know there's something about these kinds of sloughs and persecution and pliables which knee are needed um, to help us realize how foolish we can be they keep us humble and therefore keep us trusting god but they also train us don't they time and time again to see there are superior beauties and things that we need. And, and it's just, it's a way of deepening our faith, isn't it? That is better for us than if they were just all completely removed. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And the fact that God's given us helps, you know, when we are down in the dumps and falling down and mm. not, not hearing the promises because of the fog and the stink around us and, 
um, we, we've we've got to got to be where there's help. Yeah. The yeah. worst thing you can do is lock yourself in a room when you're down, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, leave me alone, help. I just need some time. Yeah. I I can't talk to anyone. That's that's a disaster. We need to yeah. be open to people yeah. helping us. And yeah. yeah. And that the, the, you know the cry that we, we've been looking at the song of ascents, but the cry of the psalmist is. You know, I'm looking around in a, in a in a dangerous road. Where does my help come from? It comes from yeah. the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. And our Father is such a good Father in that He sends us helps in in all sorts of ways. Right? He sends chiefly through the Holy Spirit, but He also sends uh, help in brothers and sisters who point us to the greater realities of of the Christian faith. I suppose and and. Mm-hmm. It's good to be reminded of these things, and it's and I think it's what you're saying as well, Ben. In that we are in a community to help one another, and so um, nothing is more important than than the Church of God and, and being part of His family. I, I really like help because I, I've tried to think about what He's doing. He's, he's he seems to be lurking around to stay off the spawn, doesn't yeah. he? Because um, he knows people will trip up there. Yeah. Yeah, so he's out looking to help someone. He's, he's not just sitting at home waiting for a phone call, is he? He's not an emergency service so much, is it? I think he's, you get the feeling he's sort of going round this, looking around, there's one I can help, mm-hmm. and let's pull him out. You know? and, it, and it's a sort of easy action, isn't it? It's a hand here, yeah. come out, you know, slight rebuke. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> why are you here? Off you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's could have been avoided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, rather nice. I'd like to be that. Yeah. Are we happy? Yeah, yeah, we covered enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll be picking up the story next time. So do uh, continue to tune in as we make our way through the Pilgrim's Progress. Do feel free to uh, to share these things around as well if you uh, know other people who you think would be. Uh, be blessed by uh, these discussions then uh, feel free to pass it on uh, the website cornerstonechurchkingston.org is where you can find uh, sermons uh, we have preached through the pilgrim's progress the songs of ascent uh, as rory mentioned we're in that series at the moment so please uh, do make use of all of that and uh, look forward to having you tune in next time Thank you.